Now that we've wrapped up our discussion of limits, we're ready to take some baby steps toward derivatives. And we usually start by talking about average rate of change and slope at a point. Slope at a point could also be considered instantaneous rate of change. So the good news is you already know a lot about average rate of change. Let me draw a quick picture and I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to start this discussion off. Oops, that seemed a little curvy there. I'm going to draw a y-axis and an x-axis here, see if I can draw them relatively cleanly and perpendicular. And let me just introduce you to my friend function f of x. Here comes f of x. He's curvy, and he goes through like this. And we're going to focus on a closed interval. Uh, we usually label the left side of that interval A and the right side B. So remember, A and B are on the x-axis. So f of x, and we're going to focus on the closed interval A, B. If this A is an x number, then the y value associated with that x number is f of A. And the y value associated with this B number is then f of B. Okay, now, when we talk about the average rate of change of this function over the curve, we're really just interested in where we started and where we ended. So if I just sort of darken in these points here, this is a comma of f of a and this is b comma f of b, the change in the x coordinates is just b minus a and the change in the y coordinates is just f of b minus f of a. So we have these changes here. And if we want to talk about the average rate of the change, that's just a ratio. And we usually write that as f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And this is our average rate of change. You may also know that by another name, m, uh, because if I were to draw a line through these two red points, uh, we could just call this the slope of the line, right? It's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, this particular green line has a special name in this picture. It's a secant line. Similar to if you studied circles in geometry class, when you have a circle and a line passes through the interior of the circle and hits it in two points, that's a secant line. This line up here in our picture serves the same role. I think you'll also remember from studying circles that there's another kind of line that just bumps the circle in one point, and that's called a tangent line. And we are also going to be interested in tangent lines to our curves, and we'll get to that discussion in a minute. But for now, this average rate of change, we call this the average rate of change of f on AB. Is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. This is a famous formula. It's essentially just the slope formula that you learned in Algebra 1. But that's what we're going to use to compute average rate of change. Whenever somebody asks you about average rate of change, and the keyword here is average, you're going to do this slope formula. There is another rate of change called instantaneous rate of change, and that is not the same as this. So when they say average rate of change, you use this formula. Okay, let's do a quick little example before we move on to a further discussion of instantaneous rate of change and slope at a point. So in this first example, we are asked to find the average rate of change. Remember, the average rate of change has a special, special meaning. For this function, f of x equals x cubed minus x on the interval a, b. So, uh, 1, 3. So this is an interval, and they're basically telling us what a and b are. a is the 1, b is the 3. So if we're going to compute that average rate of change, and again, I'm just calling it m because that's pretty much what it is. It's the slope of the secant line. I'm going to do f of 3 minus f of 1 over 3 minus 1. And then we'll just plug the numbers in. Now, 3 cubed is 27 minus 3 
that's going to be 24, over 3 minus 1 is 2. So it's 24 over 2. So the average rate of change, or the slope of that secant line, is 12. Now obviously, this function is not the same one that I had in the picture, because my slope didn't look anything like 12. 12 is pretty steep. But for this function, on this interval, the average rate of change is 12. And that's all you do to compute average rate of change. f of b minus f of a over b minus a. Those calculations should be pretty straightforward. Now we're going to go back to our picture, and I want to introduce a new idea. So I want to shift gears and stop talking about average rate of change and start talking about instantaneous rate of change, meaning what would be the slope of the curve at this one point? We won't be able to use our usual slope formula because you need two points to do that. We're going to have to focus on this one point. So the idea is this. What we decide to do is we decide to take b and slide it closer to a. So this point here starts traveling backwards, and it would end up here, and then we calculate those, that slope, and then we move it backwards some more, and it moves back this way some more, and we keep moving it backwards, and then here's another line, right? These are all secant lines. And then we move it backwards some more along the curve, and it's getting closer and closer to A. B is. B is moving towards A. And you can see as we start drawing the, oops, I totally missed that one. Let me see if I can get this a little better. As we start drawing these, this succession of secant lines, we get closer and closer to what we're going to call a tangent line. See, if I keep moving it closer and closer, here's another one. And ultimately, we move B right on top of A. So it moves there and it moves here. And that new line, which I'm going to make with red instead of green, when B is right on top of A, oops, this is a terrible drawing. Let's try this again. When B is right on top of A, I get a tangent line. It bumps up against that curve at one spot. Now I've destroyed this picture. So I'm going to start a new slide with a clean drawing so that we can just talk about that tangent line there. But the idea is that we take B, and as we move it toward A in a limiting sort of a process, eventually we end up with this tangent line. So as I said, I'm going to start with a, a clean picture here because that one had a lot of junk on it. And I'm going to draw F a little different. Still F, it just, I'm going to pay more attention to where my dots are. So here's F. And we still have A. I'm just moving A over here a little bit so that my tangent line, and here's B. And let's put some dots on these coordinates here. And then you know this is F of A. And this is f of b. Okay, so we had that secant line, and I will draw it once, but I'm not going to draw all the other ones in between. And then the, the line that we were shooting for is this tangent. It comes through kind of like this. It bumps at one point, and it moves on. We already know how to do the slope of the secant line. That's the average rate of change. That's your old algebra slope. What we don't know how to do is to compute the slope here if both of the points are A. And the reason I'm saying that we don't know how to do it is instead of doing f of B minus f of A over B minus A, we would have f of A minus f of A over B minus A. And we know that's 0 divided by 0. Ooh, wait a minute. 0 over 0 is something that we like to deal with. That's our indeterminate form from our limits. So maybe this has something to do with limits, and we already showed on the last slide that it does. We just need to have a different language here. So check this out. Instead of calling this, or first of all, let me give this distance between A and B a name. Since we're going to shrink the distance between A and B, it'd be nice for it to have a name. We're going to call it H. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename letter B here. 
instead of calling this b, I'm going to call it a plus h, right? This distance all the way to b can be considered a plus h. And if this is a plus h, then this guy right here would be f of a plus h. And so we can write this formula for the secant line, the average rate of change, the slope there. Instead of f of b minus f of a over b minus a, we just simply replace the f of b with f of a plus h minus f of a, the same as it was before, over a plus h, because that's b, minus a. And this thing, after we simplify it, so I'm going to actually get the eraser out here. And do you agree that a plus h minus a is just h? So we can simply eliminate these. I'm going to rewrite the h so it looks a little bigger, because that h is important. This thing that we just made here, it's still our average rate of change on the green line, but it also has a special name. This is called a difference quotient. Oh, my handwriting's terrible. Come on, baby. Let's write this a little neater, sorry. Difference quotient. And I hope you'll be able to see this already. When we move B back toward A, what we're doing is we're shrinking H, right? H keeps getting smaller and smaller. It becomes this distance, this distance. And essentially what we're saying is we're sending h to 0. And when we do that, basically what we're doing is we're taking a limit of this difference quotient. And when we do, this point will be on top of a. This b point, a plus h, will be on top of a. And the slope that we'll have achieved when we find that limit will be um, the slope of the tangent line, right? We're going to figure out what this 0 over 0 is heading toward. We'll solve the limit and we'll get that. So the, the green has a special name. That's the limit. Uh, that's the difference quotient. And when you take the limit, you're finding the slope of the tangent. Let me put this all together and then we'll do an example. Okay, so a summary of what I was trying to explain on the last side is written here. What we're trying to do is establish the slope of a curve at just one point. So we write our difference quotient in terms, in terms of a, where our b is actually a plus h, and then we send h to 0. And if we can compute this limit, we can get the slope of that curve at one point. We call it the slope of the tangent line. All right. Remember, this fancy thing here, this is called the difference quotient. Kind of a big deal because it's got its own name. And what we're trying to do is solve a limit. So I'll show you um, in practice how we do that in two steps. In the first step, on the next example, we are simply going to deal with this creature f of a plus h. And make sure you can deal with this composition because we're literally plugging in the expression a plus h into a function. And this is a place where students sometimes make mistakes, so I'm going to take it slow and show you how that works. Then I'll show you how to do the whole slope. And once we have a slope, we can write an equation of a line, which will be the last thing that we do. So we'll start with this example. We are simply going to compute two things. Um, for the given functions, we're going to figure out what f of a is, and then we're going to figure out what f of a plus h is in each of these. So I'll do f of a in red, and I'll do f of a plus h in blue, just to keep it separate. So let's start with f of a. If I'm plugging a into this function, all I have to do is put a where x is. So that's 1 over a. That's not bad. Now for f of a plus h, I'm going to put a plus h in that place where x is right there. So that's going to be 1 over a plus h. Just practicing plugging a plus h into a function because this thing shows up a lot in our difference quotient. Now, in letter B, notice there's two x terms, and so we'll have to plug in our a and our a plus h in both those places. We'll do f of a in red. So here f of a is just going to be a squared 
minus 4x, or 4a, shoot. Sorry about that. We're simply plugging a into the function. And we'll split, switch to blue here. You have to be careful when you insert a binomial into a function. We're going to keep that as a quantity, a plus h. So when I do x squared, I'm going to put a plus h in parentheses squared. And when I do minus 4x, I'm going to put a plus h in parentheses so that we distribute that negative 4 correctly. And then for this one, we should simplify it. So when you expand the binomial, you get a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. Then we're going to distribute this negative 4. And so that's minus 4a plus 4h, minus 4h. And this, this expression here will be the f of a plus h. And then finally, let's deal with this last one. We're going to have f of x equals the square root of 4x plus 1. We'll plug a in first in red. So f of a, that's just going to be the square root of 4a plus 1 because we're just putting a in where x is. That part's easy. The harder part is plugging in a plus h. So again, we just got to be careful and put that in as a quantity so that we can distribute the 4. So 4 times x, remember x is a plus h, plus 1. And then if you want to expand this, that would be 4a plus 4h plus 1. So getting comfortable with substituting a plus h into a function is basically what we're trying to do on this example here. Okay, let's use that to help us find the slope of a curve at a point. And as you can see in this example, they are asking us to actually do that. Find the slope of the curve, our curve is x squared, at the point 2, 4. So just to be clear, this is not an interval. This is 2, 4 on the coordinate plane, so a equals 2, and then this guy is f of a, and f of a equals 4. And we're asked to find the slope at one point. To do the slope at one point, remember, we've got to use this new limit formula. The limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient, f of a plus h, but we know a is 2, so I'm going to write 2 in there. f of 2 plus h minus f of 2, and I'll write out f of 2 this time, but then we already know what f of 2 is. And then I put this over h. So this is the formula for computing the slope. We do the limit of the difference quotient. We know what a is, so I've put 2 in the place of a. And then we're going to go ahead and, and figure out what f of 2 plus h is by substituting that into this formula here. So f of 2 plus h is 2 plus h squared, and f of 2 we already know is 4. So I'm just going to write the 4 in right there. Oops, I forgot my limit notation. That is bad form. Come on, man. Uh, why isn't it erasing? Hmm. It will not let me erase. So I'm going to have to take charge here. Um, I'm having a battle with my... <laughs> notes here. So this is the limit as h approaches 0 of 2 plus h squared minus 4 over h. Notice if I try and do this limit right now, I get 4 minus 4 over 0, which is 0 over 0. So it's still indeterminate. Uh, let's see if we can find the value of this limit, because we need that to find the slope. So I'm going to expand this binomial. That's going to be 4 plus 4h plus h squared. I just multiplied that out. And then there's a minus 4 still, and that's over h. Now notice these 4s are going to cancel. i got 4 and a minus 4, so those cancel. Also notice that I have a common factor in this 4h plus h squared. I can factor an h out. And if I do that, I have the limit as h approaches 0 of h times 4 plus h over h. And that is great news because I can cancel those h's. And now if I do substitution, 
I get 4 plus 0, which is 4. So the slope of this curve at 0.24 is 4. That's called the instantaneous rate of change. We figured out the rate of change of the curve at a single point on the curve. This is not the average rate of change. This is the slope of the curve at the point. It's the instantaneous rate of change. So you're going to use this limit formula, f of a plus h minus f of a over h as h goes to 0, to compute slopes of curves. It's the limit of the difference quotient as h goes to 0. Once you have the slope and you have a point, you can write an equation of a tangent line. Let's do that and we'll wrap the video up. So in example 4, we're asked to find the equation of the tangent line for the same curve we just did at the same point we just did. And from algebra class, you learned that if you know the slope and a point, that you can write the equation of a line. You use what we call the point-slope form. So in algebra 1, that looked like this. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And these green, blue, and red spots are just fill in the blanks. So in calculus, we use essentially this same equation, but I'm going to rewrite things a little bit. First of all, remember that we already said this guy is a, and this is f of a. So I'm going to use those in this formula. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add this y1 to the other side. So when I do that, I end up with y equals, instead of y1, we know that's f of a over here, so I'm going to call that f of a. y equals f of a plus, for the time being, I'm still going to use m as the slope. There's going to be a different name for that pretty soon, but right now we'll just call it the slope m. And then we'll multiply this by, darn on it, I wanted to use black ink there x minus a. So this is the equation. This is just the calculus version of the point-slope form. y equals f of a plus m times x minus a. We have all the information already, so let's just finish this problem off. y equals, well, f of a is up here in the picture. It's 4. Uh, the slope we did on the last problem, that was also 4. And then a is 2, so I'm going to put x minus 2 in here. And then most people like to see this written in slope-intercept form, so I'm going to distribute the 4, and that makes 4x minus 8, and then add in the plus 4, and this is going to be y equals 4x minus 4. That's the equation of this tangent line. And really, this was just an algebra exercise because we already figured out what the slope was in the last problem, right? We figured out m was 4 in the last problem. That limit of the difference quotient, that's the thing that people need to remember. That's how you get the slope right now of a point, uh, of a curve at a point. I actually want to do a quick summary on this last slide that, that I'm just going to add now and then we'll be done. So in the video, we really covered four things. And I just want to highlight those for everyone here so that we can sort of wrap this up in some kind of summary. I'll just make some quadrants here for our four little things. So first of all, we studied uh, average rate of change. And the formula for that is just your old slope formula written in a fancy calculus way. The formula is f of b minus f of a over b minus a. It is going to be a, uh, recommended that you memorize that thing. It's a good idea. Average rate of change, f of b minus f of a over b minus a. And then we adjusted that formula slightly so that we didn't have it in terms of a and b, but just in terms of a, we made something called the difference quotient. It's really just a different version of that formula. The difference quotient is f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So when we talk about average rate of change, you want f of b minus f of a over b minus a. 
When you talk about the difference quotient, you want f of a plus h minus f of a over h. And then we have learned how to find the slope of a curve at a point. We take the limit of the difference quotient as h goes to 0. So that slope, m, is the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. That's the formula that we use for the slope. And finally, we just wrote a new version of the point-slope form to give us the equation for a tangent line. That's y equals f of a, that's your y1, plus the m, and for now we're going to keep calling it m, the m from above, times x minus a. That's how we're getting the equation for the line. And let me say it one more time. This m is the m that you computed up here. Well, that's a terrible arrow. But that's the deal. So this is what we learned in this lesson. Average rate of change, difference quotient, slope of the curve at a point, and the equation of a tangent line. Give the problems a try, and then we'll talk. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer those. Take care.